This video will cover section 7-3, estimating a population standard deviation or population variance. We're gonna start off with some notation. You should be familiar with all of these notation except the last two here. <clears throat> all of these we've seen before, um, either in chapter three or chapter six um, or in chapter seven, right? In the prior sections. Okay, uh, now these two new ones, this one is the left tailed critical value of chi-squared. Chi-squared is a distribution similar to the T distribution and Z distribution or the normal distribution, but it's a different distribution. And we'll talk about that in a bit, but the this is the Greek letter chi and then the squared, right, in the math, the squared, raising to the second power is squared. And the L here um, tells you that it's the left tailed critical value, chi-squared. This, on the other hand, is the chi-squared um, to the right, or the right tailed critical value, chi-squared. Now, what is chi-squared? What is the chi-squared distribution? Um, it's a distribution very much like the normal distribution, but it's used in other situation. Uh, in particular, in this section, we're gonna use it uh, as a model, distribution model, for estimating the population standard deviation and population variance. Three quick facts about the chi-square distribution. The curve is non-symmetrical and skewed to the right. Non-symmetrical, unlike the normal distribution or the t-distribution where it's a mirror image of, um, both halves are mirror images if you cut it in half, right? The chi-square is not like that, it's non-symmetrical. It's skewed more to the right. So in other words, there's a longer right tail. Fact number two is there is a different chi-squared curve for each degrees of freedom. Similar to the T distribution, chi-square has degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom one, the shape of the graph looks like that, the blue one, degrees number two, the one in yellow, I'm sorry, the one in green, degrees of freedom three, the one in the pinkish color. The, more, the higher the degrees of freedom, the more the curve looks like the normal curve. <clears throat> All right, so that's fact number two. Fact number three is that the test statistic for any test is always greater than or equal to zero. So notice how these values down here are non-negative numbers. You have either zero or positive values. You cannot have negative numbers for the chi-square distribution. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into a problem. Uh, but before we do that, there's some values you need to know how to find or calculate. We've seen um, the significance level alpha. It's very much the same as with the two prior sections. Alpha is equal to one subtracted confidence level. Degrees of freedom, very much the same as with the T distribution. Degrees of freedom is equal to N minus one, where N is a sample size. Then we have the left tail critical value, chi-squared, left, right? And the right tail critical value of chi-squared. And those are values that you need to use to calculate it. You need to use the chi-squared table. Now, you'll notice I highlighted this in red because there's a typo in my notes. So if you have an older version of my notes, you may see that um, this is right when it should have been left. Left tell critical value should be read the area to the left is one minus alpha divided by two, not right. So if you have the older version, please scratch that out and put left. The bottom here is correct because we're talking about the right tail critical value and using the chi-square table, it is the area to the right, which is equal to alpha divided by two. So please make that adjustment or that change. And then you have to be able to take all of these and put it together and construct a confidence interval. Construct a confidence interval for the population variance or the population standard deviation. This is how you would construct a confidence interval. This would be your lower bound. This would be your upper bound. Again, lower bound, upper bound for the standard deviation. So for the variance and standard deviation, they look very similar, but they're different. So I'm gonna highlight them in two different colors. 
So to differentiate the two, uh, let's start with the variance first. So with the variance, the lower bound is equal to what I have here highlighted. This is the lower bound. That's the formula for the lower bound. And this is the formula for the upper bound. So this is my formula for my lower bound. This is my formula for my upper bound. For the um, standard deviation, it looks very much the same. The lower bound looks is exactly the same as the lower bound for the variance. However, we're taking the square root of the lower bound up here. So with the standard deviation, when you're estimating the standard deviation, you're taking the square root of the lower bound for the variance. Likewise, for the upper bound, it's the same as the upper bound here, but you're taking the square root. And we, if you guys remember back to chapter three, there's that relationship between the variance and the standard deviation. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So similarly, the lower bound and the upper bound for the standard deviation when you're constructing a confidence interval is the square root of the lower bound and the square root of the upper bound. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into a problem. So for this problem, uh, for these problem, it's asking you to round to two decimal places. Problem number one says a random sample of 25 is randomly, is drawn from a population that is known to be normally distributed. The population must be normally distributed in order to construct a confidence interval for standard deviation or variance. So that's that one, it's one requirement that you need, <coughs> that is that is required. All right, and then it says the sample variance, so the sample variance S squared is determined to be 14.7, constructing 95% confidence interval for the population variance. So first things first is, you got to know and see that we're constructing a confidence interval for the variance, which is what I highlighted in this orange color. In order to construct it, you need a lower bound using this formula here and then an upper bound. And this is pretty much just the, this, this entire thing would tell us the confidence interval in inequality form. So when I'm writing my confidence interval, I'm just going to go ahead and and put, start to write it like this, right? This is the middle stuff. We're saying that the population variance is between the lower and the upper. And then once I calculate the lower, I'll stick it right there. And then once I calculate the upper, I'll stick it right there. These are the formulas for the lower and the upper for the, for the variance, right? The co constructing a confidence interval for the variance. Okay, so we need to know a few things. We need to know what N is. So N is 25. We need to know what S squared is, which is the sample variance. Sample variance is 14.7, so that's given. So I'm going to go ahead and write it right there. And then this is the confidence level. And in order to calculate the left, or left and right tailed critical value for chi squared, I need to know what alpha is so that I need to... Uh, from the chi-square table, I need to identify the, low, the left area, which is 1 minus alpha divided by 2, and the right area, which is alpha divided by 2. Okay, so we need to know what alpha is. So alpha is equal to 1 subtract the confidence level, uh, which is equal to 1 minus 0.95, which is equal to 0 0.05. <clears throat> Um, I also need to know what the degrees of freedom is, and the de degrees of freedom, because I'm using the table, we need to know what the degrees of freedom is. So the degrees of freedom is equal to, so the degrees of freedom is equal to n minus 1, so in this case 25 minus 1, which is equal to 24, all right? Now, in order to find, because I already, I know this value, I know this value. I just need to know that value and that value, right? So in order to find the critical values, um, I need to know the left area and the right area. So we'll say that the left area, and I'm going to denote it with alpha L. That's not an official notation, but I'm going to denote it as alpha L um, is equal to 1 minus alpha divided by 2. 1 minus 0 0.05 divided by 2. And that's equal to 
Uh, we can go ahead and punch it into the calculator. So that's equal to uh, 1 minus 0 0.05 divided by 2, and that's equal to 0.975. I also need to know what the area to the right is, the area to the right. And that's defined by alpha divided by 2. So that's defined by 0 0.05 divided by 2, which is equal to 0 0.025. All right, so those are my two areas, my area to the left and my area to the right, uh, which would allow me to find the critical values. So in trying to calculate this, I already have most of what I have. That's n minus 1, so that's 25 minus 1, which is 24. And I'm going to multiply it by s squared, right, s squared, which is 14.7. And I'm going to divide that by the right tail critical value for chi squared. And I need to make note of those two areas and the degrees of freedom because that's how I'm going to find the the chi, the right and left tail critical values. All right, let's go to the table to see what we have there. So I already highlighted the the uh, the right and the left area. And I've highlighted the degrees of freedom as well, 24. And so the intersection of those highlight, like the highlighted column, the highlighted row is 12.401 and 39.364. This is my left tail, and this is my right tail area, or um, chi-squared value. All right, so for going back here, for the lower bound, I need to divide this by the right chi-squared, and that was equal to that was equal to um, 39.364. Right? So again, that's this value right here. And the right and the uh, actually the, the the upper bound is the same as this. So I'm going to rewrite it over here. Actually, I'm going to write it side by side. So 24, 14.7. And then I'm going to divide it by um, the left tail critical value, chi-square. And that's equal to 12.401. And I'm going to see what I have for both. So let me go ahead and pull up the calculator and evaluate those two. So for this, the lower... Right. Let, let me just go ahead and say that this is the lower and this is the upper. I'm running out of room, but let me, let me go ahead and move this over like that. And move this over here. Okay, so for the lower, I'm going to go ahead and punch it in. That's equal to 24 and then times 14.7, close parentheses, and then divide by the 39.364. Okay. So rounding to two decimal places, this is equal to 8.96. And for the upper, it's the same exact thing, but I need to change the denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up till that expression is highlighted, press enter to copy and paste, press the right button. So I'm going to override this, ex this number with this number, the 12.401, and then press enter, evaluate, and I get 28.45. So what that tells me is that this is my lower, right? This is my lower and this is my upper. So when I'm constructing my confidence interval, the lower is on the left and the upper is on the right. So this is my, my confidence interval. So my confidence interval is what I've just boxed right there. Oops, go ahead and do that. Okay, so that's how you would... Sorry, the calculator was blocking it, but that's what it is right here. So we have 8.96 is the lower, 28.45 is the upper. So if we're estimating the population variance, what we concluded is the population variance is between 8.96 and 28.45. So let's look at this problem right here. So this problem is a little different. We're given some data. So it says the following 
The following data represents the age at which babies first crawl based on a survey of mothers. It has been verified that the population is approximately normal. Again, normal population is required in order to us for us to use the chi-square distribution to, to construct the confidence interval for the standard deviation or variance. Um, and it says construct a 90% confidence interval for the population standard deviation at which um, babies first crawl. All right, this is one set of data. Even though it looks like it's two rows, this is one set of data. And these are um, the number of weeks in which these individual babies begin to walk. All right. And we're trying to, const we're trying to um, extrapolate from this sample data and estimate a, a confidence interval for um, uh, the population standard deviation for the ages and weeks in which the baby first to, begins to crawl. Actually, to crawl. I'm sorry, I said walk, but it's to crawl, right? So here's how you would do it. Um, you need to f calculate the standard sample standard deviation and then find the sample variance. Um, I already put down these, but I'll show you guys how to do it. And then you construct the confidence interval. This is my lower, this is my upper. Here's what you would do first. You would put this into a list, put this entire data set into a list, L1, right, or L2, whichever one you prefer, uh, but it has to be in one list. And then we're going to run one var stats on this. We're going to run one var stats. Right, so let's go ahead and do that. So let me pull up my calculator. So I'm going to go to stat, edit, and I'm going to go ahead and go into L1. So I'm going to go up clear, press down, and then I'm going to enter in the values. Oops, I put, this should have been 49. Uh, 40, let's see. Uh, let me double check. So 45, 40, 47, 49. Uh, this should have been 41, 25, 38, uh, 38, and then 27, 25, 33, 40, 48, 46, and 32. All right, so let me just double check that my numbers are correct. So it looks like it's all there and it's all correct. Uh, so I'm good to, to begin. So I'm going to run one of our stats on this list, L1. All right, so I'm going to go to stat, go to calc, one of our stats, and then run it on L1. Let's pretend it, this wasn't here. So to call L1, I'd have to press second and one, right? And then go down, calculate. And that gives me SX, which is the sample standard deviation. Right? That's what I want right there. So that's going to be 8.55. I'm rounding to two decimal places. And then to get the sample variance, I need to square the standard deviation. I need to square the S. Now, I can write this down and then square that number. Or if you guys remember from chapter 3, we can go to VARs, which is uh, variables, and then go to the statistics variables, and then go to SX. That SX, the unrounded, is stored in SX. I can call it and then square that, and which would give me the variance. So the variance, the sample variance, is 73.1414. I'm rounding to two decimal places. Okay, now to get the lower and the upper, I need to use these formulas right here. Uh, these formulas with the square root. So the lower, the lower is equal to the square root of n minus 1. So in this case, n is uh, 14, right? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then double 7s because there's two rows of 7. So that's uh, n is equal to 14. Um, just while we're at it, let's figure out what alpha is. Uh, the confidence level is 90. So confidence level is 90. So that's 1 minus 0.9. So alpha is equal to 0.1. Um, and then we also, um, we know that the degrees of freedom is equal to 1 less than n, so that's equal to 13. All right, just some, some values we need to know how to find. Okay, uh, and then in here, the formula here consists of uh, n minus 1, which is equal to the degrees of freedom, which is 13, times S squared, which is the sample variance, that's 73.14. And 
and then divide it by the right critical the right tail critical value for chi squared 22.362 and the upper bound is equal to pretty much the same thing however we're dividing by the left tail critical value which is 5.892 now, how do we get those? Remember, we're using this table here, right? And what we need to know first is we need to figure out, we need to figure out the um, left area and the right area, right? We need to find the area to the left, which was the one minus alpha divided by two. And I denoted with alpha L. That's again, that's not an official, um, that is not an official notation. It's just one that I made up on the fly, all right? So that is uh, one minus alpha divided by two. So alpha is 0.1 divided by two. Um, and then alpha on the right side, the area on the right side is alpha divided by two. All right, so this is easy. This one is just 0 0.05. And this one should be um, 0.95 and again if you can't do it in your head you can always just punch punch it into the calculator right to get the 0.95 and then 0.1 divided by 2 to get that okay so now that's how I got those values the critical values so we're looking at this column and this column right here so that's 13 uh, times 73.14 and then we're going to divide by 22.39 oops 362 evaluate and our left tail our, our lower bound is approximately 6.52 and our upper is the same thing so I'm gonna go up here but I'm going to replace the uh, 5.892 with the, I'm sorry, I'm going to replace this with the 5.892. All right, so that's uh, 5.892. And delete that too right there. Press enter, and that's my upper bound. So my upper bound rounded to two decimal places is 12.70. All right, so my lower bound is 20, not 20, 6.52, and my upper is 12.70. All right, so just like that. All right, so again, you got to be um, very careful. I know there's like a lot of different moving parts, and then you got to find a lot of different things, and things can get um, can get mixed up. So be very careful when you're when you're solving these um, problems because they can one little small mistake trickles down, right? All right, so that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know and please reach out.